welcome to biology with Deepika and in this video we will be learning about the life cycle of Paxinia graministritiki. Here we can see how this obligate parasite looks like when it infects the wheat plant. It looks like reddish brown in color or sometimes uh, black reddish black in color. It is found like streaks or like pistils on the leaf. So in this video, I will give you complete note on the life cycle of Paxinia graministritiki with a very elaborate and simplified explanation. So let's begin. So Paxinia graministritiki is otherwise known as the rust fungi. It belongs to the kingdom Planta, subkingdom Thelophyta, phylum Eumycophyta, class Pasidiomycetes, order Eurigenals, family Paxinia C, genus Paxinia. And this classification is given by Oswald Tipo. Its habitat is like it's an obligate parasite, means it is a parasite and which it cannot complete its life cycle without exploiting the host. It has more than 700 species and 150 species reported from different parts of India. Some species of Paxinia are autoecious and some are heterocious. So let's see the difference between these two autoecious type and heterocious type. The species which complete their life cycle on a single host are known as autoecious. For example, Paxinia asparagi and Paxinia butlevi. The heterocious are these species which request two unrelated hosts to complete their life cycle. For example, Paxinia coronata and Paxinia graminis. So Paxinia graminis triticae is, a, is a known as the black rust or the stem rust. It is an obligate intercellular and heterocious fungi whose life cycle is completed in two hosts known as the wheat uh, whose scientific name is Triticum vulgar. It is the primary host and the barberry bush or Barberis vulgaris as this scientific name is the secondary host. So this is the characteristic, principal characteristic of this uh, fungi Paxinia graminis triticae. It's, let's go to its vegetative structure. The vegetative structure of Paxinia is represented by both monokaryotic and dikaryotic mycelium. We will uh, look at the, those two terms, monokaryotic and dikaryotic mycelium. In dikaryotic mycelium, each cell has two nuclei. This occurs in wheat plant, the primary host. In monokaryotic mycelium, each cell has a single nucleus. We can go to the term mono means one, di means two. So you, we can remember like this in monokaryotic mycelium, each cell has a single nucleus. It is confined only to the alternate host, Berberis vulgaris. Both the mycelia are well branched and septed. Septed means uh, they have a line between them. The septa have pores through which cytoplasm of the adjacent cells is in continuation. The wall of the hyphae is made up of cutin and glucan. The fungus absorbs nutrition from the host cells by well-developed spherical hostoria. Life cycle of Paxenia is also known as polymorphic and microcyclic because it completes its life cycle having five different spores which is extremely complicated it has five different type of spores euridospores teleutospores basidiospores pycnidiospores or acidiospores so we will see in complete detail how these spores are formed and the cycle of paxinia continues from wheat plant to Burberry bush and again to the wheat plant. As it is a cycle, it continues from wheat plant to Burberry bush and again to the wheat plant. The first step, the first step starts with the primary host, Triticum vulgar or the wheat plant. In the uridineal stage or the first stage, uridospores are formed. Uridospores are oval, uninucleate, unicellular, this is a one cell, unicellular, binucleate, and it is a stalk spore. This is stalk. The 
hypodermal groups of ureterospores thus formed are called ureterosori these are hypodermal cells known as ureterosori they are seen on the surface of leaf plate this is the epidermis whole, uh, epidermis they are found on the epidermis so they are found on the surface of the leaf plate leaf sheath and stem as reddish brown or blackish pistils or streaks these are known as repeating spores these are known as repeating spores because when they are mm, matured uridospores are exposed when epidermis of the host is ruptured the spores germinate as soon as they come in contact with uninfected leaves of nearby wheat plants the mycelium now produce also forms uridospores in this way several crops of uridospores are produced in one growing season and large area of wheat crop is infected hence this is known as repeating spores then we will move to the next the telial stage where teleutospore are formed when wheat approach maturity the dikaryotic mycelium starts producing teleutospores instead of uridospores and they here teleutospores are formed these spores are dark brown black pistil stalk spindle shaped and two celled here known c two celled with thick black and smooth wall this is the thick black and smooth wall each cell is binucleate and has a germ pore this is the germ pore and it is binucleate two nucleus it this is one cell this is another cell it has two nucleus this cell also has two nucleus so it is binucleated at maturity both the nuclei of the cell fuse and form a diploid nucleus as they mature the host epidermis ruptures due to pressure from within these are known as resting spores and can survive unfavorable condition due to their highly thickened walls Teleutospores remain in the soil till the next spring season. They do not require any host for germination. This is the young teleutospore. When they become uh, matured, they look like this. They have a thickened wall, and this thickened wall helps them to uh, remain in the soil till the next spring season. Next, we will move to the basidial stage, the third stage, where basidiospores are formed. when spring arrives teleutospores get suitable condition of temperature and moisture and gives out a long tube through germ pore called epibasidium here we see teleutospore have germ pore when spring season arrives when they get suitable climatic conditions of temperature and moisture epibasidium is formed out of the uh, uh, germ pore of teleutospore now the diploid nucleus of the cell migrates into the epibasidium and divides meiotically producing four haploid nuclei two of these are positive and two are negative each epibasidium divides into four cells each of which contains a single haploid nucleus each epibasidial cell gives out a tube laterally called sterigma or it um, in plur singular it is known as sterigmata it is um, sterigmata and bears a terminal basidiospore here they bears a terminal basidiospore these spores are thin walled colorless unicellular uninucleate and haploid as they are haploid they are uninucleate unicellular colorless and they are thin walled Teleutospores cannot infect wheat plant. Likewise, basidiospores also cannot infect wheat plant. However, if they fall on the leaves of barberry, the alternate host, they germinate and produce monokaryotic mycelium. Then we will look at the stages on the alternate host barberry bush. The haplophase of the life cycle of Puccinia graminostriticae begins with the germination of basidiospores and is only confined to the alternate host barberry bush or the barberis vulgaris its scientific name. We will see how pycnidio spores are formed. The pycnidial stage or spermogonial stage begins in the alternate host barberry bush. under favorable conditions the haploid basidiospores infect barberry bush they germinate on the surface of the leaves by producing germ tubes 
this entered the host through epidermis and form well developed intercellular mycelium known as haplomycelium as it is formed by haploid basidiospores depending upon the nature of basidiospores the mycelia are positive or negative strains this mycelium uh, term means this is the vegetative part of fungus or fungus like bacterial colony consisting of a mass of branching or thread like hyphae so mycelium is the vegetative part of the fungus usually several basidiospores germinate on the same leaf producing mycelia of different strains here the pycnidial stage is continued within few days of infection closely even mats of hyphae are formed just below the host epidermis here we see the mycelium just before the host this is the epidermis so mycelium uh, it is formed the hypodermal hyphal mats eventually form flux seps marmogonia called pycnidia this is the flux sept pycnidia the cavity of spermogonium is lined with long unicellular spermatophores and sterile paraphyses here it is the sterile paraphyses and this is the pycnidiospores among the paraphyses are also present some branch slender hyphae called flexus hyphae or receptive hyphae its spermogonium or pycnidium opens on the upper surface of the leaf through an opening called ostiole this is the ostiole opening opening is known as ostiole the spermatophores and paraphyses remain within the cavity of spermogonium but flexus hyphae protrude through the ostiole this flexus hyphae protrude through the ostiole we will see what the receptive hyphae Uh, will or the flexus hyphae have uh, have its function so that it is uh, present towards the upside of the epidermis each spermatophore produces a series of smooth uninucleate spermatia or pycnidiospores this comes out of the spermogonium through ostiole along with nectar spermatia neither infect wheat not barberry but simply function as male gametes spermatia of one strain are transferred to the flexus hyphae of another strain through insects as soon as the spermatium of one strain comes in contact with the flexus hyphae of another strain the wall between the two dissolves the nucleus of the spermatium migrates into the flexus hyphae this process is known as spermatization spermatization both these nuclei lie side by side in the basal part of flexus hyphae forming a dicaryon or a cell with two nuclei of different strains this is the special uh, part of forming formation of the pycnidiospore in pycne formation of pycnidiospore spermatization process takes place where the spermatium of one strain comes in contact with the flexus hyphae of another strain in this way the pycnidiospore is formed the second step uh, stage is the acidial stage which is found in the alternate um, host the barberis vulgaris the formation of acidial stage actually begins much before the acidial cup appears on the lower surface it is initiated with the penetration of haplomycelium which forms the pycnidial as spermogonial cup near the upper surface upper leaf surface here haplomycelium is formed the further development into acial cups occurs only if the spermatization occurs in the haplomycelium of pycnidial cup as a result the mycelium that would form acial cup becomes dicaryotic each acial cup has a deep cavity embedded on the surface of the leaf the wall of the cup is made of a sterile tissue known as peridium this is the peridium this line is known as peridium the roof is lined with dicaryotic cells formed as a result of spermatization the cells function as acidiospore mother cells they form chains of binucleate cells towards the lower epidermis these cells differentiate into long and short cells which are arranged alternately 
the long cells mature into acidiospores whereas the short cells disjuncture or disjunctive cells remain sterile here the acidiospores are formed acidiospores are smooth binucleate polyhedral thick wall with six germ pores they are orange colored and almost completely filled with acial cups acidiospores are incapable of infecting the barberry plants they are carried by wind to the plain where they infect fresh wheat crop the primary host under suitable environmental conditions acidiospore germinate on the leaves of wheat and form dicaryotic mycelium here the cycle uh, it, it is a, here it is shown the complete cycle how spermatization takes place the acial cup is formed acidiospores are formed and the germinating acidiospore they infect the wheat plant and again this life cycle continues uridospore then teleutospores are formed then how haploid nuclei in promycelium uh, and two strands combined to form basidiospore uh, and the pycnidial cup is here pycnidiospores are formed again and this cycle continues here i have again shown with clear picture of the on the cycle in the wheat plant and the barberry plant and here it is shown with very um, nicely how it is formed with seasons and where meiosis is taking place and like this it is a colorful pictorial um, representation of the cycle and to make this life cycle easy to remember i have given a mnemonic like utbpa just, if we just remember this utbpa we will never forget the series of the life cycles the spores the the uridospore teleutospore basidiospore pycnidiospore and acidiospore so these are the characteristic feature of the spores and whether it can infect the plant or not i have written in short with their pictures so before any exam you can just look at this page and go and write for the exam here the uridospore are oval uninucleate and stalked and they are found on the surface of leaflet stem as reddish brown or black is pustules the teleutospores are dark brown or black pustules spindle shaped stalk two cells thick and smooth wall it is it has a diploid nucleus with a picture the basidiospore are thin walled colorless unicellular uninucleate and haploid and they cannot infect the wheat plant the pycnidiospore and male gametes are spermatia when one strand of spermatium with different strain of flexus hyphae spermatization occurs takes place forming a dicaryon mycelium then acidiospore are smooth binucleate polyhedral orange colored thick wall with six jump pores these are capable of infecting wheat plant and form dicaryotic mycelium i have simplified this microcyclic life cycle of Vaccinia with the term UTBPA. So before the exam, you can just remind of the term UTBPA and just write for any exam. So thank you for watching my video. If this was helpful, then please comment, share, like, and subscribe. Thank you.